Ghana every year from just look at food, something, you know, is their food. And the total number of that could be up to 7 million the people will get sick, that's according to CDC. But even it's not scary. Some of them are probably poor or misdiagnosed. And every year, I mean, about 5,000 people die because of disease. Basically, eating something contaminated then can give you good form illness. And basically, common signs they have the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or even headache. And normally, the sign will appear 12 or 72 hours after eating. So, this is the list of 10 risk food in America. And basically, one is the leafy green, I mean that, or Spanish. Have you heard any outbreak with the fish? Yeah, or I mean that. This is the 336 outbreak, that's the book one, and a lot of you know, 30,000 of the reported case. And because mainly leafy greens grow in the field, after that, and you know, basically harvest that, even though they go through the auction and the processing, Sometimes the contamination will not be completely eliminated in that shop. And when you got consumer, and if you do any do the processing, of course, I mean, well, especially in the case like they even sell, I mean, normally at case, I mean, people can get and take from eating the drink. And eggs, number two, you know, when that goes through the, the many just draw your attention, a lot of food, and they can get contaminated. I mean, you know, eggs, I mean, we all heard about salmonella in the egg. You know, if you cook the egg sunny side up and or not worry, and even sometimes, you know, it's just at risk to get, you know, with the salmonella. And tuna, you know, those seafood, I mean, basically that's a different story. The tuna has some seafood toxin in there. And oyster, and, but berries. I mean, if you look at the bottom, the number 10, that's included. Of strawberry, blueberry, and raspberry, and it's not on the top of it. It costs 25 and it's about 3,000 of the units each year. And basically, what, what's the, the strawberry? You know, but it's like all the fresh, I mean, you know, it can get come and add with that, or you know, add to the point, right? And the bacteria known to have contaminants or Strawberry in this case is like E. coli or Listeria, salmonella. I mean, those are the bacteria, human pathogens. And on the other side, we have other hepatitis A, the virus, I mean, also the human pathogen. They can get into the, the product. I'm just give you one example of that. You know, just the, in Oregon, and the, the strawberry farm in 2011, and it was you know, with the E. coli 015H7. And that instance caused, uh, I mean, a lot of days, and many, they find, you know, it's E. coli contamination. After investigation, they say, where did E. coli into, onto this? And according to the investigation, they find out, I mean, for a gram that because, I mean, the pieces can't feel on the water run off, in situation. But, Overall, contamination can occur in any from the field to the table up to the farming and the all or the distribution. You know, in the case of strawberry, I mean, you come in from water or in touch with some the soil contamination, irrigation water, or and mainly, I mean, you know, if you annual farm on the side to the farm and the run off from the annual farm and you know, carry animal waste that can come in your product. It's an organic product is less likely to be but no, I mean the organic strawberry is the same, you know, it's pesticide or artificial fertilizer free, but it protect again the pathogenic bacteria contamination. So that's it. That's why it's all I mean. 
for you to test or make sure your product is human passenger free, is humming. And so basically, it's protect the consumer to get safe product and you know, not to get, I mean, sit in the product and also protect your business, you know, because you don't want to involve an outbreak situation. The traditional way, basically, I mean, to, to test all the bacteria product, but basically we have method, we have to get the soap and to the lab, and you put that, you know, sample in the culture vessels, and we do the, you know, and we call the enrichment, make the bacteria grow in there, and we isolate that, you know, individual bacteria in the agar, you know, up. we go to the lab, I can show you and how it's, you know, isolate, and of course, we have to do the biochemical test and term on what kind of bacteria is it. Strawberry. And just showing some of the biochemical, I mean, those are much tedious and normally take them to perform and identify the bacteria. And some use the chromatography to identify the message from the bacteria. The DNAs, I mean, you know, lab, we do have a different machine. We can amplify the DNA and the pinpoint of what's the specific bacteria in the product. Or we can have the base method, we can take the bacteria antigen or the thing from the bacteria I mean, that, that was contaminated with this. Okay. But basically, see, I, I would like to demonstrate to you today is called the deep stick. And that's the, the assay. It will be most be a for all mostly for I mean if you want to put it into the field test that test can design and become it adapt into a field your test you can run that in very quick without any human but the principle is like the strip we already put two reagent imagine you only can see here in this case you only can see the red the other color you won't be able to see the color you can see is the red Basically, we put the two reagents there, we're not able to see. One is the specific for detect the bacteria and serve as a control in the world, detect the reagent pass through. And on the second one, when we are put our analyte, the liquid that may contain the bacteria, it will flow through the strip and move through and it will carry the red dot. And if you have the bacteria liquid, it will bind to the slide so you will see the, the red line on there and the, uh, the liquid is still passing through then I mean the second line will automatically detect the liquid pass through that's the count so if you see the two lines I mean, you've got a, a bacteria in there I mean particular or say in the salmonella coli or listeria what kind of bacteria there I mean we have a different strip for testing that and if you only have a one line that's, you know this strip that means you don't have any big contamination Basically, it out, I want just it's simply that's the procedure you can use and to test the strawberry. First, the strawberry is in the left corner there, it's a of three strawberry. In the middle, then you add the liquid or the liquid to the bag, to the bag, and you grab the bag and then shake the bag, right? Because you try, you know, if any shear on the surface of the straw, try to dislock and make the solution. And you go take the solution from the bag, put into a small cup. It's at the bottom. You drop eight of the liquid in there. And we do have the three different test strips. The red, and blue, and green. That's the for specific bacteria like high. 0157 or listeria monera and you make this trick dip into the cup so that's why it's called the acid and basically you just wait for 15 minutes and the result like is that two lines or just one line then you know the result instantly after that so and these are some of the methods I mean developing as and you know if to be able to get a eventually as, as a field test you, you can be sure of it, you know, you will be able to use that kind of, uh, I mean, if that is available to you. And so, best of these, I'm going to bring you, I mean, you know, 
to the left and what that you experience, I mean, the test itself. Yeah. So you will be able to do the test. Is it exciting? Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Huh? Before, okay. Before you, are you finished? No, no, no. Okay, so, probably still wondering, they give us 200,000 March and Arkansas. What are we doing in the project? The whole project, we get the farmers involved because we select the location. Uh, we, we propose to help you to grow them safe organic. But for you, we cannot do anything about that because your land is your crop. What we are doing here is that Dr. Chen is a food safety expert. That's the case to detect medical disease, biology, detect the development to detect uh, uh, animal feed. See, if you already process it enough, you can feed your mouse. You heat it up or do whatever, he develop all the sensors. So when, when they announced this project, we said, what are we going to do? What can we do? So we propose to use this technology to just give to the, the, the kit. We will do a very simple deep stick. So give to the farmers. When you want to sell your strawberry, because then you can just show them, my strawberry is safe. Oh, human pathogen, because why is organic? I think a lot of people worry about, especially this fresh fruit, it's more about getting sick, because it's, it's, it's not you get 100 people sick. If you get one people sick, your year harvest is gone. They're going to say, okay, what farm can get one contaminated from farm this year? I'm going to buy anything from you for the week. So we want to have something you can protect yourself. And also the fruit shop will be able to use very simple, in 15 minutes, you know okay, this batch of strawberries has to go to onto the, you know, the sell them. Mm -hmm. So that we are proposing to do. Chen, he or he's going to do you, uh, he, he knows how to know how to do it. <laughs> and they educated me how to do it. So his, uh, we are right now to show you how to do a commercial deep stick. So you learn how to use it. At this the same time, have a collaborator, protein chemist in the UA laboratory. What a haze. The, the, nowadays, we know you, you watch the uh, CSM Army, all kind of shows. What they are doing, they scan the whole genome. Because all the colon, salmonella, listeria, all these, they are all whole genome sequence. So we know exactly what gene, where, where it is, what they are. So they will scan the whole gene. And the sensor said some kind make some help and develop a new batch of kids stick, so which will be much sensitive than the commercial one. And then as we get those ready, we'll be able to go to the farm and train you how to use it. Because what we found in our, in our project is even the strawberry juice, you get contaminated. Strop, let me go back. Actually, I don't know if that's a good news or something. We are still figuring it out. Uh, during the summer, I got something from Cornell, uh, New York. So we inoculated all these bacteria. We did these uh, strawberries in E. coli, in salmonella, in these tips. Then we shipped them back from New York to uh, Tennessee. We are supposed to study those uh, pathogens, but unfortunately, the cooler uh, become hot room. So the cooling was done. So uh, I was so afraid that all the mold is going to fit the cooler. So we open up all the coolers. There's even one mold. So there's completely clean. No bad smell, nothing. So we put those strawberry on. You know, Dr. Chen was complicated test uh, in the lab. And not all bacteria is dead. And then he was able to uh, work out uh, with our grad student we can still detect the bacteria proteins, how those are bacteria is dead. So right now, we are looking into if those proteins are still toxic. If those are toxic, with this technology, it is very, very important for fresh, uh, those called fresh fruit juice. When you produce those fresh fruits, you know, even if they, they don't have it when they're in the lab, looking for the bacteria, you don't see it. Bit, but the toxin protein, they will be there. So 
we're still developing the technology. Hopefully, it will, you know, we'll work out something. So that way, if we, if this thing works out, we we'll start this in, in the CDC, then we'll be able to contribute, hopefully, to, to, to. <laughs> So look, so you a strawberry. Yeah, those, <laughs> those strawberries I brought y'all in November. That's the test now. Yes, we we run your strawberry. Uh, I send out to you. Uh, we run you on your strawberry. We uh, put the bacteria, E. coli, salmonella, and listeria onto your strawberry because we know you harvest on the same day. Then we put them at a four degree and put them at the room temperature for two days, four days. I think uh, why is it long? And we did say. After four days, like E. coli, salmonella, their uh, population goes down, half of them dead. But uh, I think at least yeah. nothing happened to those after one week. So they are supposed to use entrance from strawberry because they are human pathogens. After one week, they are still there. None of them are dead. Oh, some dead, but they are still propagating. We don't know what happened, but it's something Think of the food safety side, you think uh, it's strange. <laughs> but we are finding new things. And we also took uh, his strawberry. Because we, we think, yeah, you know, we are studying this bad, bad, bad bacteria. But there is something good. Because uh, we put a strawberry, I think, uh, put on the plate. Some of the bacteria turn to a uh, red color as the strawberry. So they are producing something, those bacteria. Maybe they are uh, something good. So we, we, we washed all the bacteria off and for the DNA sequence, still waiting for the to come back, tell us what the good genes are that covers the strawberry. So if that information comes back, we, you know, uh, research scientists write papers promote consumption of So that's uh, what we are doing. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you very much for being with us. <laughs> yeah, and we had to go to the lab in the other building, as the cop building, and I had an assistant there will help um, you um, to get, you know, to perform some of the lipstick assay. And before we go, I want to take note, okay, the strawberry, we are intentionally contaminated with some of the bacteria there, yes. And so, so I want you to wear, we have some, I don't want you to get, you know. We have gloves. We have gloves, we have aprons. And of course, I mean, the most important thing is, you know, you will find the bacteria will not do it do any harm unless you eat them, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, unless you really eat them. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, they will do harm. Yeah, so be careful, but we don't want to get, I mean, you know, before you leave, I want you to wash your hand, yeah, clean, and you'll be fine. And, but if you, for some reason, have some, I don't know, kind of, you know, has that, I mean, yeah, we are come you can do an observation, but you don't have to handle it yourself. Probably those bags, I mean, bacteria is in the bag, you know, you not, you don't have to directly handle with your hands. So that's the same thing. And, but still, I mean, we want you to clean, wash your hand very well before I mean, you leave here. And you don't have to carry the bacteria home with you. So then, yeah, how how do you want to build in there? Okay, okay, then. Oh, we don't. Where's the bell? Yeah, we're we're oh, going to you. Uh, hey, come back uh, here. No, we'll take your stuff with you. But, but no, that's the lab. We don't. Okay. Oh, yeah, leave no. everything. Leave one person. However, since you've been here, yeah. temperature has dropped about two degrees. Outside. Seriously. Right. Okay. It is now, I look, I've been looking at weather bug, it's now about 20 degrees out there outside. and it's snowing. Just a little. Just a little. It's not snow, but that's just to let you know how cold it is. You are going from the building, so bundle up. <laughs>